Hello, I'm Lynn Maynor and we are a pencil partner and we proudly support our Megadic High School and our Two Rivers Middle School. Um, as a business partner, we support going to those schools and helping them with their learning and connections to the real world uh, through our culinary program, through the hospitality program, and also with Two Rivers with a reading program. Um, as I said, I am Lynn Maynor and I work at Opryland and I've been in the hospitality industry for, gosh, 25 plus years. I've certainly enjoyed the hospitality industry and I've done many different types of jobs. Uh, one of those jobs is the one that leads me to you all today because I get to teach. Um, I'm not a normal teacher like in high school or elementary school. I'm not teaching math or history, but I'm taking all that math and history and making relevance in the workplace. Because when you come into the workplace, we're going to have to learn how to communicate with each other. We have to solve problems. We have to think with our brain. And so the thing I'd like to share with you today, my recipe for you all today, I'm wearing my culinary recipe. I'm really not a culinarian. I'll leave the cooking to the true culinarians, but I am cooking up a recipe for you all today to help you to think better. And I'd like to share with you one of the books that I learned a lot from on thinking, and I use it at Opryland. It's called The Six Thinking Hats by Edward de Bono. He's considered the international guru of all thinking. He has helped us to come up with ways to simplify our thinking process and to make it so much easier and less painful. Because decision making and making choices and decisions and thinking, it can get so hard our brain gets so tired like this. Just like where we find ourselves in the world today. It's complicated out there and everything is turned upside down and inside out. We have lots of emotions, sometimes we're feeling helpless and that just leads to more confusion. So how can we slow down and think a little bit differently? Um, the biggest enemy of thinking is confusion. Uh, when we get too confused, we just start getting frustrated. It's like these puzzle pieces here. We're trying to put the puzzle together and figure something out. And I got these emotions and I got this information and I got other people's opinions and I got these thoughts running through my head and these ideas and I don't know what to do. Should I get a summer job? Should I not get a summer job? Should I go into the pathway of hospitality? Yes, do that. <laughs> or should I go in a different one? Should I go into health sciences? There's all kinds of careers out there and opportunities. And that's what you're learning to decide in high school. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do with your life? And that can be confusing. So let me give you a tool from the Six Thinking Hats that can help you with that process. All right, so what I'd like to do now is come a little closer to our Six Thinking Hats, first of all. The Six, the, the six Thinking Hats is a simple concept that allows you to do one thing at a time versus trying to juggle all that information, all those balls at one time. It's like juggling in that process. And if I picked up my balls and tried to juggle this, it's easy to juggle with one ball, right? And then I add another one. I'm doing pretty good, aren't I? If I added a third one, oh, I've already lost it. We're doing too much with, with, one, with, with our thinking. So let's simplify that process. The six hats separates that process. You can see I have six hats up here, and they're all of different colors in that process. And when you think about hats, well, you can easily put a hat on, right? I can put the red hat on. Boy, it matches what I'm wearing too, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. I can take it off. That's the thing about hats. You can put one on at a time. It's like putting your thinking cap on. That's where Edward de Bono went with hats. Easily taken on and taken off in that process. It also signifies roles. If I put this hat on, right, I'm now, well, almost a culinarian, right? I can at least look the part. <laughs> but I have a hat on. It dignifies a role, right? So the hats help us to understand what role we're playing, and we can put one on at a time. The colors also help us too. It simplifies things. When we think of colors, it's easier to remember a color than maybe a psychological word for that type of thinking in that process. So I'm going to share with you the six thinking hats, why the hats, why the colors, what those colors represent, and then we'll practice something uh, together with that. And then I'm going to come back with part two where we can continue to practice these skill sets so we can get better at that. Um, you can also go to Google and ed look up Edward de Bono and the Six Thinking Hats and get some more information. But I'll make it simple for you all today again, because again, we're not going to do brain surgery. We're just going to learn a little bit more about how to separate the processes. Just like if I was going to play golf. Some of you guys may be golfers out here. In a golf bag, like I have here, this is my brand new one, there's all kinds of clubs, aren't there? Okay? And we don't play golf with all these clubs at one time, do we? That would be really silly and complicated. What we do is use one club at a time. So I picked the driver today. Let's get the bigger driver. I like this driver. This is the driver, right? If I want to hit the ball long distances, I'm going to get ready. The driver is the club that I would use, right? If I'm not hitting long distances and I'm actually on the green, I'm going to use my putter, right? So I would know to bring this club out because I'm going to be putting. All right, well, our brain is the same way. 
We don't need all the clubs at one time. Let's just pull one out at a time. We're gonna use our hats to do that. All right, that helps us to separate the process. Just like if we were gonna print this on a, in a um, go, go to print this map over here or this poster, it won't print all the colors at one time either. It only prints one color at a time, but when it's finished, it has the full spectrum. Hence the colors of why Edward de Bono chose colors to help us to see that, okay? So we got some fun up here. So let's play a little bit. Let's look at our white hat. When you think of the color white, it's kind of neutral, isn't it? Even on the art scale, it's a neutral color. It's just there. It's kind of objective in that process. So our aim here is with the white hat. When we put the white hat on, we're aiming, we're playing the row, just one thinking pattern again, not all the emotions and stuff coming at us at one time. I put the white hat on. I'm now going to think about white hat thinking. White hat thinking is about getting information and data. What information do I need to know? What questions might I have? Where can I get this data? So if I was deciding about what type of career, I might need to explore that. Where can I explore that? I could visit with somebody. We could have our partners share some of those examples and bring data to you about the type of job it is, what type of skills that you need in that process. If I was gonna make a recipe today, I need to have some data. What temperature does it need to be cooked at? What ingredients do I need to have? Oh, I don't know all of that, where can I get that? I can look in a recipe book, I can go to Google. There's so much information out there in Google. It's a great information source. So the questions that the white hat at is asking is what information is missing? What do I need to get? How are we getting it? And where is the information needed? Well, we're really looking for facts here because sometimes when we're making decisions, we might make it based on emotions and not necessarily facts. So the white hat is all about finding facts and what information do I need? If I have that, I can put that hat back now, right? I can take that hat off. Let's look at our red hat. When you think of red, what do you think of? Emotion. Sometimes when people get angry, they get red face, that anger, that emotion. That's why he chose red for this hat. So that's what the hat is all about. It's about emotion. So when I put my red hat on, I'm dealing with what is emotion and my intuition telling me. It also validates that we're okay to have an emotion and think that that way. What do I feel about this? In that process so how do you feel about doing something what makes us feel like that I'm just validating that emotions have a play in our decision making as well what's your gut feeling about this okay so that's what our red hat is so it's red for emotions in that process we also have another hat called the black hat so I'll reach over and pick up that black hat okay and I'll put the black hat on because now I'm just gonna think from the black hat perspective the black hat is all about what is the um, cautions? What are the downfalls? What might derail this? It's, an, it's, it's of all the hats, it's the critical hat. We're wearing a critical hat in this process. What are things that might derail this? What are things that might get in our way? It's uncovering those things so that we can do better. Oh, Jackson brought me something. He wants to play. <laughs> He's my dog, Jackson. He wants to play right now. Jackson, we're doing some thinking right now, okay? So we're not gonna play right now, okay? We're in the black hat thinking right now. So that's all about what if it's not going to work? Will there be any damages in that process? So it's always good to think about something before we play it out so that we've gone through and we've derailed any of those things. So it's all about, ne not to say negative, but just what are the downfalls? What are the cautions in that hat? So I'm gonna put that hat back. What are the weaknesses in our proposed idea, okay? Then we have the yellow hat. When you think of yellow, well, we think of sunshine, don't we? And that's why, again, the yellow is gonna be about the positives, the benefits of this idea. Oftentimes in, in school, back when we were little, we learned when we had to make a decision, we would make it through what are the positives and what are the negatives. That's kind of the negatives and the positives here. But our thinking is much greater than that in that process. So the yellow hat is what are the benefits? Why do you think it will work? Um, in that process. So we're identifying the positivity behind something. What are the potential of this working for us? The ideas in that process, okay? So we'll put the yellow hat back. We also have a green hat. I'll reach over and grab my green hat in that process, okay? The green hat is asking, what are the possibilities or alternative? Green is for growth. What is the, when you think of green, it's new, it's growth. Right now there's a ton of green out here when we look around Nashville, new growth coming out. So this is about taking the idea and what other possibilities can we take from this idea and change it, alter it. As we're thinking, sometimes a new idea comes in and that's where the green hat thinking comes in. So that is all about, do you have any ideas and what kind of alternatives do we have here? Could we take this proposal and change it just a little bit in that process? Uh, so that's what the green hat is, growth in that process. And we have one last hat here. And that's our blue hat. 
The blue hat is kind of like, well, when you think of blue, open sky, high potential in that process. It's the overviewer of the process. I'm the one right now choosing what hat I want to wear. So that's what the blue hat is. I'm like the conductor. More flute, please. Less clarinet. I want to call up the flute. I want to call up the red hat. So I'm the process person. I'm the controller. I'm like the conductor in this. Or in simple terms of music, it could, you could be the DJ and you're deciding what music to play in that process. So it's an overview of the process of that. What, who isn't, I'm sort of the one in charge of this process. And what do you think about all of this? So once we go through the hats, what is the, what, it's helping us to get to the next step. So what did we learn when we thought about all these emotions? What was my emotions telling me? What did our data tell us? Well, based on my emotions and my data, where are you at, Lynn? What's the next step for you? So that's what the blue hat is all about in that process. All right, so when we think about the hats, those are the, the six different thinkings. Just like the clubs, there's different clubs. We have different thinkings. If I simplify that from hats, what are the facts we're working from? What is my feelings telling me? Did we find some weaknesses in this thoughts or ideas? What, off, what new ideas do I have? What strengths does it bring me? And think about the thinking in this process. So we're gonna separate these. So right now, if I asked you a question, uh, for a moment, I could ask everybody out there to put on your red hat thinking and tell me how you feel about the six thinking hats. I called you up to say, we're just thinking from the red hat right now. I was able to get you to focus right on the red hat. Just like if I put this hat back and said, I want you to look around my space for a moment and find everything yellow. So if you zoomed in here and you looked around, you're gonna find yellow in here, right? Your brain immediately goes to yellow because I called up yellow, doesn't it? So. Uh, you can see there's a yellow clock, there's a yellow hat, there's the yellow ideas, which belongs to the green hat for new ideas in that process. There's the yellow here, there's yellow up here. Yes, because I told you to look for yellow. Now, if I asked you to focus on blue, you're going to focus on finding the blue. That's what's going on in our brain as we separate these processes. We look through these questions. Now, how can this help us? Well, again, we're making decisions all the time. So if I'm looking at maybe considering a new job, might I want to use the six hats or some of the hats? Jackson, you have to move down. <laughs> Jackson, we're, we're learning Jackson. <laughs> so that's our six thinking hats. How can we simplify this process? So let me take an example here for a moment. We're gonna focus in. Sorry. We're gonna focus in on this question or this poem actually, it says, a man says to the universe, quote, sir, I exist. However, replied the universe, the fact has not created in me a sense of obligation, Stephen Crane. Okay, so now we have a, a poem or a quote here, right? In that process, okay? Now, I'm gonna ask you for a moment to put on, let's see, I have a work chart here. You could look at that poem and we can zoom in on that for a moment, okay? And I could ask you, I'm gonna grab my hats for me. I'm gonna grab my hats and I'm gonna ask you to put on, let's just separate the colors for a moment. I bet you had a reaction to that poem. So let's just put a red hat on for a moment. Let's look at our red hat for a second. As we look at that poem there in that process, what feelings does this poem create for you? How do you feel about this poem? You might think, boy, that was an awful poem, or I liked that poem, or I don't have any thoughts about that poem. I'm just getting you to share your feelings. You do not have to validate why you like something or why you don't some like something, but you immediately probably had a feeling around this poem, okay? So, but I want you to think more than just the feeling behind the poem, and I want you to think deeper than that too. So let's use all the colors here to pull out some thinking, some good thinking about this poem. So I'm gonna take off the red hat, and let's put the white hat on. We're just practicing using these hats for a moment to look for things. So the white hat was all about what facts and what questions. So can we pull out a fact from this, from this quote? Well, one fact could be, it's written by Stephen Crane. Is that a fact? Yes, we can validate that, right? Absolutely. What's another fact that we could have? I want you to jot something down from that poem. What's another fact that we have? There's a universe, right? 
and there's a man. Two people are talking. Well, two things are talking. The universe and a man are talking, right, in that process. And we could actually quote one of them. That would be a fact, right? Uh, a fact could be that this poem does not rhyme. There's no rhymes in the poem, right? So we're able to distinguish facts now. So we can pull facts out. I, may, I still may not like the, like the poem, but I can still pull out some facts from the poem. It's good thinking to be thorough thinking, our ecology of thinking. What are some positives? If I put the yellow hat on, what are some positives about this poem? Maybe you might not see any, but I'm going to get you to think yellow for a moment and get you to think positives. Well... I know if I was back in English class and I had to memorize this poem, I like it because it's a very short poem and I can memorize that. There's nothing complicated here for me to not memorize that. That's a, I like that positive. Um, so we can think of different things that are positive. I like that the positiveness that there's, there's a universe and there's a man and that they're talking to each other. I think that's a lot of what's going on today out here in our universe. We're talking to the universe and the universe is talking back to us. All right, if I ask you to put the cautions on with this hat, what are the negatives or potential downfalls of this poem? It might make people sad. That could be a potential caution. Um, I might not want to read anything more by Stephen Crane. That could be a caution too, right? Because maybe I didn't like this poem or this reading, so therefore I'm not going to like anything that Stephen Crane, and that could be a turnoff. That could be a downfall, right? Because we might judge Stephen Crane based on one thing. That could be a caution, all right? If I put the green hat on here, what could we do to change this poem? What could we do to offer something different to this quote or this poem in this process? Maybe we could make a sketch out of this and act it out. That might be funner in that sense of versus just reading it in that process. We could add to this, this activity a little bit more and make it more interesting for people to play out. Maybe we should brainstorm some questions that the universe and the man could ask each other. So we're altering the, the, the existing thing to something else. And the blue hat is what I've been doing by calling up the hats. And as a result of that, we might have expanded our thinking. And now I could go back to the red hat again and say, well, how do we feel now about the poem? Did it alter and change us a little bit? Do we feel differently about that poem? Maybe we did, maybe we didn't. But you see, I made us think together one at a time in this process. So that's what the six thinking has to help us with. So as you're thinking about life and where you're going, I couldn't do this without the six thinking hats. When I've gotten caught in confusion and emotions and frustrations, I've stepped out of my thinking and then went separately through this process. Now, you don't have to use all the hats at one time. Sometimes you can just call up a hat. I remember when I was taking my daughter, Anna, uh, to, to a college. She looked at several colleges and went on campuses, but I remember uh, every time before we left the campus, I asked Anna, how do you feel about this campus? Just tell me your feelings about this campus. I was calling up the red hat and had her talk to me about how she feels about this campus. She liked it, didn't like it, it felt interesting, whatever, and that helped me to get an idea of what she was thinking and feeling uh, and helping her to clarify as she makes good decisions uh, in that process. So, that's the end of part one to Six Thinking Hats. And thank you, Edward DeBono, for sharing your Six Thinking Hats process with us today and let me share that uh, with all of you. I hope that was been, it's been helpful. So as you go out and think, I want you to start thinking differently through the processes and think holistically. Let's just practice getting used to these colors and hats as you listen to people talk. I wonder what hat they're thinking from. All hats are valuable. All types of thinking are valuable. No one hat is better than the other hat for sure. All right, put your thinking caps on and have some fun with the six thinking hats.